All right, so I've got my wing made, and now I'm going to get started on project two, making my horizontal and vertical tails uh, for my aircraft. So I'm going to work in the same um, file that I did my wing in. And um, in some modeling programs, you use a bottom-up modeling approach where you make everything in different files and then combine it into one. Fusion actually has uh, the ability to do top-down modeling where we make everything in one file, and then we will uh, create components out of those and set it up correctly to create the aircraft afterwards. So that's the approach I'm going to use here. So I'm going to make my tail in the same file. And uh, to do that, I'm just going to turn off my wing. So I'm going to hide the body of my wing. My construction plane here that was my right wing tip, I'm going to name it that so nothing gets confusing as I go along. And now I want to make my horizontal tail. And the first thing I'm going to do is come up and enter in some parameters for my horizontal tail. I'm just going to keep adding into my list of parameters here. So I'm going to do my root cord for my horizontal tail. And I'll put this in as feet, as 6.4 feet. And then I'll need a tip cord for my horizontal tail. And I'll put this in as 2 feet. And then I'll need a half span for my horizontal tail. And I'll put this in as 6.25 feet. Okay. Now uh, you can decide what airfoil you want to use for your horizontal tail. I'm going to use um, the same airfoil at 0006 in my case, since it's a nice thin symmetric airfoil anyway for a fighter type aircraft. So I'm going to go to utilities, add-ins, scripts and add-ins, import, spline, CSV, run, NAPC uh, 0006, and there it is right there. I want to uh, rename this sketch here. Uh, I'll name it my root airfoil for my tail, yeah, for my horizontal tail. And I'll redefine the sketch plane for this as my XZ plane. So that'll be perfect. I'm going to rename my sketch for my rails, so my wing loft rails, so that way I don't get confused about what these sketches are. Okay, and now I need to. Um, create another sketch for the tip of my tail and so first I'm going to come in here to my root airfoil sketch I'll select all that copy it exit this sketch come back to solid modeling whoops now I automatically made a new sketch here because I had that stuff selected and I put the origin of the new sketch in the middle of that airfoil that's not what I wanted at all so I'm going to delete that sketch make sure I have nothing selected and create a new sketch and now it's letting me choose it if I can get it to stop going away on me. Now the origins at the tip. I'm going to line it up here and press control V and now I've got my airfoil at the tip. So that's exactly what I want. Um, and now I need to scale these two things. So I'll scale the root airfoil for my horizontal tail and this scale factor will be CR H tail HT divided by 10 millimeters and now I'm going to rename my oops rename my tip airfoil for my H tail and now I'm going to modify that one and scale it by C sub T HT divided by 10 millimeters okay and now I need to create another construction plane for my uh, tip of my horizontal tail. So I come up here to construct offset plane and I will move it out by the half span for the horizontal tail. And now I will redefine the sketch plane for this. Basically the same kind of step steps that you did for the wing. Redef redefine the sketch plane for this to be that plane there. And now I've got a nice setup here. For my horizontal tail. Now the only thing I didn't put in was the um, leading edge sweep for the horizontal tail. I want it to be uh, equal between the leading edge sweep and the trailing edge sweep. So I know my root cord was uh, 6.4 feet, my tip cord's 2 feet, so the difference there is 4.4, so I'm just going to move the tip airfoil back by half of that. So I'm going to select the tip airfoil, move it back by minus 2.2 feet, 2.2 feet. And now 
it's right in the middle. So the only thing I need to do is to set up those loft rails again. So I'm going to create another new sketch. I'll put it on the XZ plane at the origin. I'm in three dimensional sketching mode so I can connect the origin to the very wingtip. Uh, and now I'll also make a line from the trailing edge of the root to the trailing edge of the tip. Finish that. Now I can loft these things by selecting those two things. In this case, the loft did not need any help from my guide rails at all. But I'm going to go ahead and select them anyway in case I move something around. It won't break my loft later. Okay. Alright, so there's half of my tail. Now I'm just going to create the other half by mirroring this around this plane right here. Now I'm going to want to name these bodies here. So I'm going to name this to be my wing. I'm going to name this to be my horizontal tail. And if now I've got two bodies in here, I can turn them on and off and do different stuff with them. I'm going to arrange them uh, later when I actually have my fuselage in here. And I'll show you how to arrange these bodies. But for right now, I'm going to make my vertical tail as well. I'm going to use the same thing for my vertical tail. I'm not going to 0006 and I'm going to uh, import that CSV file again. Okay, and it's way down there. In this case, that's where I want to leave it because I want to loft it up, up to be my um, vertical tail. I'm going to need to put in some parameters for my vertical tail. And I'm going to modify parameters. Now I'm going to need a CR of my vertical tail in feet. And I'll do 11 feet for this. I'll need a CT for my vertical tail in feet. And I'll do four and a quarter feet for that. And then I'll need the uh, height of my vertical tail. And this will be in feet. And I'll do four and a half feet for this. Okay. So I'm going to scale that last sketch that I made. And I'm going to scale it by CR vertical tail divided by 10 millimeters. There it is right there. And I'm going to rename this to be my um, root of my V-tail. And I'm going to rename sketch 11 as my H-tail loft rails so that I don't forget what it is. Okay, now I can insert a construction plane here coming up from the bottom to be the height of my vertical tail. And I'm going to import another spline for that sketch profile. I'm going to redefine the sketch plane of sketch 13 to be up there. And then I'm going to scale sketch 13 now, which I know is my uh, tip of my vertical tail. Yeah, there's the tip of my vertical tail right there. And I'll rename this tip of my V-tail. Now, I want the uh, V-tail to be lined up with the trailing edge between the root and the tip. So I'm going to select the tip here of the V-tail. I'm going to move, copy it, and I'm going to move it back by a distance corresponding to CR of the vertical tail minus CT of the vertical tail and that will line up the trailing edges between the top and the bottom of the vertical tail. So now if I lofted this up it would be highly swept uh, vertical tail but I want to get a little bit fancier than that. I'm going to insert another construction plane. I'm going to rename this one um, just so I don't lose track of these things. And I'm going to turn off some of these construction planes. I don't need to see all of them all the time. Okay, I'm going to create another construction plane that, and I'm just going to put it up um, 12 inches from the bottom. And I want to put another airfoil sketch on that. So I'm going to back to scripts and add-ins, import spline, run, select that same one. I'm going to move that to that construction plane that I just made. And I'm going to scale at um, this one. And I want it to be a little bit smaller than the root cord. Um, I'm just going to type in 7.5 feet. 
and I might come back and change this later. And this is divided by 10 millimeters. So, okay, now I also want to move this back so the trailing edges are lined up. So I'm going to select this, move it, and I could eyeball that, or I could come in and type C R V T minus 7.5 feet. Now it's lined up, okay? Now I could loft between these three profiles to try to create kind of a curved leading edge on my vertical tail. That's a little bit extreme though of a curvature for a leading edge, so I'm going to create another three-dimensional sketch. And I'm going to rename that first, and then I'm going to create a new sketch down here. This is going to be a three-dimensional sketch. I'm going to create a spline, and I'm going to spline between these points here. Okay, there's my spline. And okay, and I'm going to create a line straight down the trailing edges to connect all the trailing edges, and then I'm going to finish the sketch. I'm going to try the loft again by selecting these three things. And now I can select the guide rails for the front and the back. And that's a little bit closer to what I was looking for. Um, I think I want to edit the scaling on that sketch. And I'll do eight and a half feet to make it a little bit bigger. Select this sketch. I'm going to move it this way, minus one and a half feet. And now I need to redo this loft. And you can see that the loft has a warning. It has a yellow surface on it. It couldn't resolve the new loft. Um, and it's asking me to go back and fix the loft. So uh, first I want to check to make sure that my loft rails stayed in place. Those stayed in place pretty nicely. So now I'm going to right click on my loft, edit the feature. And I'm just going to try to, and I'm going to remove the profiles and reselect the profiles and then I'm going to remove the rails and add in it looked like the trailing edge rail and it's saying the rail is not smooth so I need to go back and redraw that. I'm going to try to create a spline on that rail instead of doing that so and now I can redo the loft Edit feature, and I'm going to select these three, and I'm going to select the front guide rail and the rear guide rail, and click OK. All right, that's a little bit more what I was looking for for my vertical tail. So that took a little bit to get, but that's OK. I'm going to rename these sketches and. This is my V-tail rails. Okay, so there's my vertical tail that I want for my airplane. I'm going to turn off these sketches. And all right, so what I want to do now is just arrange the horizontal and vertical tail together so it looks like the tail that I'm going for. So I'm going to rename this body to be my vertical tail. And now this is where we get into top-down modeling because I want to convert these two bodies now, the horizontal and the vertical tail, into components. And then we can move those components relative to each other. We can set up joints between them so they could uh, be constrained in some way or we can just move them and fix them in place. And in this case, I just want to move them and fix them in place. So I'm going to right-click on my horizontal tail and say create a component from this body. And then the same thing for my vertical tail. And now these two things show up as components down here. Now that they're components, they have their own origin and their own bodies inside of them. And uh, it's technically a separate system than the origin system from the main drawing. Uh, so now with the horizontal tail, for the tail that I'm going for, I want to click on the horizontal tail and move it into position. So I'm going to move it up and I'm going to put it on the top to make a T-tail with my vertical tail. So. I'm going to line up the nose of it so it's right about there. 
and I'll move it back just a touch more and I think that's just about where I want it okay so now I'll press OK and now I want to uh, lock these two components together now we can uh, create different kinds of joints between them rotation joints or slider joints or uh, whatever but I'm going to create a rigid group between these two things and it says do I want to capture the change position and I sure do because I put it right where I want it wanted it so I'm going to select the two components that I want to make as a rigid group and press OK and now I've got my horizontal tail as a rigid group now I can turn my wing back on and I can click on the move command um, I'm going to move components this time. I'm going to click on this component and now the whole thing moves together and I'm going to put it back there and in the next video I'll make the fuselage and hopefully all of this stuff will come together pretty nicely uh, when I have my fuselage in place.